Okay guys, so we got this uh, 2008 Jetta and they complain about the airbag light being on. Now I have the door open so we're going to have some other lights and they got other stuff I guess they're not worried about. But they want the airbag light fixed so we're going to scan this. So we've got this dry, driver side airbag igniter code that's that's uh, current. It's a hard fault. It says 00588. Upper limit exceeded. So we're going to go into read data stream. We'll do buy list. And we'll look for the driver's side. So we got driver's side airbag stage one, and there should be a stage two in here. Let's see. Stage two. And that should be it for the driver's side. They're usually just two stages for the front. Okay. There we go. So we got driver's side stage one. It only has one stage, and it's too high. So yeah, that's probably the resistance is too high. So what I'm going to do is we're going to see if we can pop this airbag out and we'll measure the resistance. Be nice if scan tools just gave you like bi-directional controls where you could just deploy the airbag, then you know if it's good or not, and you just replace it. Problem solved. What's the actuation test? Yeah, we won't do that. But I'm going to pop this off and we'll quick check it. Okay guys, so I couldn't find a resistance value for the airbag and usually they're between 2.1 and 2.4 ohms, I think. I, c I could be wrong. I know it's 2 point something, so I use these uh, 0.64 female terminals and we uh, probe the, oh, well, I put them over the pins for the airbag so you can see how it's OL right now. So when I put this on, you can see it goes to zero. So it's, it's like almost zero the whole time. I might have pulled some of these out, but... So that's really, really low. I'm pretty sure that's what's bad. So I'm gonna take the, we have these resistors right here and these airbag pieces right here. So we're gonna put one of these in the car and see if the car likes the resistance value of these. So I'm gonna put this in my meter. We'll look what the resistance is first and then we'll connect this to the car. Okay, so here we go. We got them connected. It's auto. I think it's auto. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So this is what, try the 2.1 ohm one. So there we go. So now I'm gonna go probe the car and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, so I got my bypass resistor right here and we're probing the factory harness and I got that plugged in. So let's turn the key on. Let's, let's see if our light goes out. So our light went out. Oh, still on. Let's see what happens on here. Uh, let's see. Where's the airbag? Airbag. I don't know if we have to clear the code or anything. Read DTCs. So let's see if we can clear this. Okay, so it's back. Let's see, let's, let's read our data stream. We might not be making a good connection with our resistor. Let's see, airbag driver's side. No, we don't want, we want the driver. Actually, I think that was the only one that we needed. Too high. So I'm gonna quick check my resistor. Because maybe it's not making a good contact. So guys, it looks like something somebody was in here because this ain't clipped together right. It was like spaced apart and there's no screw down here. See that? No screw. So I'm going to try to get this apart and then we'll check the clock spring because I wonder if the clock spring is messed up too. Because I didn't like the way it looked. Looking in here. Like, I just didn't like the way that like metal looks in the outside edge. Okay guys, I want to show you something. So, our airbag module, I mean our airbag should be these middle two pins right here. So I have my meter set on resistance, and when I come down here and go on each one of these pins, you'll see the meter never changes. So we have an open in this clock sparing. So look at that. Uh, there we go nothing. So now I move over to the other wire. I 
no change. And then the horn is going to be these bottom two pins on the left. I couldn't find this on any of the diagrams. I had to just look at the connections. So, so the horn is also open circuit. Look at this. There's no change. Let's go to the other one. I couldn't find a pinout for the bottom of this clock spring. There's nothing on the clock spring. At least that I have access to. Like I tried a couple other pins. But if we touch these together, see our resistance drops down? So our leads are good. There's an issue with this clock spring too. So we got a bad airbag and I, I think I found the resistance. I think they said it was like 3.4 to 5 ohms. It's supposed to be the airbag. That's what I found online just looking around. So I couldn't find any more repair information. I even went back to like a 2004 Audi. So it needs a clock spring and that for sure. And I guess we'll go from there because this goes right into the airbag module. Or not, or uh, I don't know what it is. It's like the steering column module right here. So I'm assuming that should fix it. But see, I don't know the pinout. If I knew the pinout, I could come down here and uh, bypass it. I'll have to do a little bit more research real quick before I put this back together. But yeah, it's going to need an airbag and a clock spring so far. So guys, I just noticed looking down in here, there's only four pins used. And that makes sense because we only have our horn and we have our airbag. So I'm going to connect two of them because one's going to be a switch and it's going to turn the horn on. The other one's going to be our airbag. So I'll get my resistor back out and we'll probe it in there and we'll see which one's which. Okay guys, so we're gonna connect this in right here. Let's see. So here we go, we're in our pins, okay? We're going to turn the key on. We'll go into read DTCs. Oh, we got kicked out, airbag. Let's see, okay. Read DTCs, airbag igniter upper limit, okay? So, we're going to go back, we're going to clear our codes, let's see if our light goes out, you ready? Look at that, it says no codes. Okay, so let's go back, let's read DTCs again, no codes, okay. Let's go into read data stream, uh, by list, and we'll select our driver's side airbag again and see what it says. Correct. So there you go guys, we know we need a clock spring and we know we need an airbag. So now if we move these over, this should actually make the horn go off. Yep, see that? Boom, confirmed. Clock spring and airbag. And look, now it says too high. Look at that, we solved it with like almost no repair information. So guys, we're back with the Audi. I just pulled it all back apart again, got a new clock spring. Here's the old one. I want to show you guys something that's pretty neat. I don't know if this one does it. Let's make sure they're the same. This one has a locking tab right there. It doesn't allow you to turn it more than that. See that? That pin? That copper pin? It's like a detent. So like when you try to turn it, it stops. When you go to go the other way, it stops. This one doesn't have that. See, there's no pin. So hopefully when you put this in, I'm hoping something presses on something to release it. Cause like see you can only go like that for. It says set the center position, do not alter. You know what? It also doesn't have that the same. Everything else looks the same. This one has, oh, you know what? I guess you pull the pin out. See, there's a pin right there. I'm guessing you pull the pin out. So we'll put this on here. There we go. Got that on there. We'll pop that up. I'm going to put our bolt in and it will stick our steering wheel on. I got a new steering wheel too. I'll show you that because there's the old one. Guys, I figured out how this works. So you don't pull this. This locks it. So see, it doesn't turn. Press it in. 
Look, now it turns. So the steering wheel turns it. So, did this other one have one and somebody... So the, somebody must have pulled it out because it's missing. So they were in here messing with this. Because this doesn't have the tab and there's a slot. Makes sense now, guys. Makes perfect sense. I bet you somebody spun that too many times the wrong way. There we go. And our wheels are centered. I made sure they were centered first. So guys, since I don't have a steering, uh, since I don't have like triple squares on my truck, I should get a cheap set. Look at this. So I got this Matco wrench set. Right here is the whole thing. And it comes with this S8 bit, which I think is like, what is that, a like quarter inch? I don't know if that's quarter inch. No, I think it's slightly bigger than quarter inch drive. Yeah, it's slightly bigger. Maybe that's 3 8 I don't have a 3 8 socket out here to check. But yeah, I just use this because it's square. Triple squares are just four squares. Or I mean, three squares. See that? So it fits right in there. Now you're not going to be able to put as much torque on it, but hey, it works. So guys, here's our new airbag. There's our old one. We're going to connect this. Hopefully it doesn't blow up in my face. Okay, guys, somehow I managed to mix up the horns. Well, the airbags, so I got it right. This is the dented one that came from the junkyard. I'm try to put this back in. So you just snap in. And I did find out that this horn only works when the key's on. So you put the key on. Look at that. Perfect. So now I gotta put our panel on. I should have put this back on first before I put the wheel back on because it would have made it easier to put this bolt in, all the screws. But I'll turn the wheel, put it all back together and then we'll make sure everything works. Okay guys, so I just started the car up, lights are on. Let's go under airbag. Let's see. Driver's side airbag igniter, let's clear the fault code. Let's see if it goes away. Read them again. No fault codes. Look at that, guys. So let's go under data stream. Uh, we don't want read by channel. We want read by uh, driver side. Stage one. Correct. Look at that, guys. So let's shut this off. Start it back up. See if our light goes out. Oh, look at that. So now I just need to see what these other codes are for. We might have to zero the steering wheel. Okay guys, so it says uh, steering angle sensor and a couple other things, steering angle sensor. So let's clear these, see what comes back. I might have to re-zero it. I don't know if I have to re-zero it. So we have no fault. Steering assist still has a fault. So I wonder if I had to re-zero it. Okay, let's go into steering assist, see if there's a steering relearn. Let's see uh, is it adaptation? I wonder if we can back out. See if there's like a quick learn thing. Special functions. Why don't I see any uh, steering angle learning? Okay, so it looks like it auto relearns. Let's see if all the other ones are the same way. I don't know what a short distance is, but I can't get the car out of here. There's a car in front of me.
turn the steering wheel one turn t while driving. Turn the wheel one turn to the to the right and one turn to the left. <laughs> wow. I have a feeling that this is going to be for all of them. Yes. Okay, so I think they're supposed to bring this car down to me tomorrow to work on, so I'll have them do that. I'll see if it clears up by then, and then we'll come back. So, guys, we're going to try to do this thing tonight, I guess. Let's see if we can relearn this. Let's come back here. drive in a straight line at 20 kilometers for a short distance. Oh, look at that, guys. It relearned. It's done. Man, that is awesome. Now let's try to find reverse. Euros is always front and left. It's always exciting to try to find uh, which gears manuals are. Especially at night when you can't see the knob. But man, look at that, guys. No more codes. Hope you guys like it. See you later. Okay, guys, it's been like two weeks or whatever since I diagnosed this Jetta. And I just hooked my gauges back up. Look at that. Now, my gauges were at zero PSI when I hooked it up because the hose that I have to use right now doesn't have a check valve. So, but. It was pulled down to like 20 inches, so that's pretty amazing because you got to think of how to pull a vacuum then on these two when I hooked them up. So it's pretty awesome. That means we ha we should have no leaks. No, it couldn't leak under pressure. I was looking at this clutch. It looks really, really funky. But I got the lines undone. I got to bleed the vacuum off because I can't get the lines off because they're sucked on. Because they're really fat lines on this, apparently. Okay guys, so I pulled a vacuum on here for like a half an hour, an hour or so. So I'm gonna shut this off and we'll come back in I guess two days and see if there's any leaks. Because right now it's really late and I wanna get home. That's where we're at. Seems to be no big leaks right now, but it'll probably be like two days. So guys, car's been sitting for like three days. We're still at 30 inches. I'm gonna hook up my tank and we'll start filling this and we'll see if it works. Okay hey guys, so I filled it. We got exactly 1.15 pounds in. You can see our pressures right here. They look good. Our evaporator temperature says 44.6. So I have the I have the driver's door open and the window down. I don't have this side down, but it should be pretty cold coming out of the vents right now. Let me go to the other side and check, and we'll see what the temperature is. Actually, I'll just feel what the temperature. Yeah, guys. It's working now. Yeah, you can see it dropped down to 42. So, there we go, just had a bad compressor. Hope you guys like it. See you later. Hey guys, look at this blower temp in that, I mean that blower temp, the evaporator temp and the outlet temp. Outlet temp's 41 degrees right now. Evaporator is 39.2. Been running for like 10 minutes. Just sitting here with the windows up. So yeah, that's a 100% confirmed fix.